And how you? Alex or Alfred? Was it? I think it was Alfred. Alfred. Gray-headed guy. Yeah, yeah. Alfred. Uh huh. He yeah. called. He called you the Godfather of this neighborhood. <laughs> There are those that do call me that, yeah. Yeah, he said you uh, stuck your neck out a lot and took a lot of risks to get a lot of things for the community. Well, you know, uh, a lot of things would not have never happened in Northside if someone hadn't stuck their neck out. And see, Northside was a forgotten product. Northside, uh, I'll say what I think and then you go from there. It was. Go ahead. Yeah, Northside uh, was considered by the city to be kind of the the uh, asshole of the city because in the early 40s during the war, they just unanimously by the, by the city council on its own just zoned everything out here, K-heavy industrial and industrial, which means that the houses were all sitting on industrial property. You know, and uh, without asking the people, they just did it. You know, and this is where all the industry was put. The stockyards, the, the cattle, uh, all the uh, hide plants. You know, everything that stunk or everything that was bad was put out here. Chemical plants, everything was done out here. So we had to overcome all that afterwards, you know. There wasn't no need to overcome it until the stockyards went out of went out of business, and uh, places like this, which are the only place that anyone could could uh, go for entertainment in Spanish, and this would become kind of the focal point of Spanish entertainment in the North Side, and. That started dying out, uh, I guess, late 60s, early 70s, somewhere in there. And then pretty soon, uh, I guess the investment was such that they couldn't make enough to, you know, really keep the doors open. So then it shut down and then it was bought by a family and just sit here. You know, and they sit here for so long that it just rotted out. You know, when I first started getting interested in this, uh, I would come in here and, and you'd fall through the floor, you know, and you look up, the ceiling was gone, the only thing that was up was for the, the, the walls. You know, there's nothing here, it was just, and it was just a shame to have this sitting here and be in such a need still for, because of the new influx of Spanish speaking people coming into the area, that I felt that, that something needed to be done to, to provide some sort of outlet for people. And then you had those people that are much smarter than I that, that could conceive cultural things. See, and, and where I was just thinking of, of uh, providing something, they, they had to plan to implement in providing the, the type of entertainment that needed to be done. Um, I was good at fundraising, uh, but I was not a not a culture thing. <laughs> so you know, it's just it's sort of kind of the combination of the two. I would provide I would I would provide with my leadership to obtain monies, and um, they would spend it. <laughs> so that worked out pretty good. Uh, it, uh, we made a good good team. Um, when I left office, uh, uh, Jim Lane uh, took over as, as my representative, my my uh, councilman out here, and that's uh, so combined together with him, we uh, started figuring ways. And of course, one of the last things that the Secretary of HUD, which at the time was Henry Cisneros. Uh, did before he left office was to provide us with a six million dollar grant, you know, which is basically the the foundation of everything here in the north side kicking off. I mean, in the fourteen hundred block, fifteen hundred block of North Main, thirteen hundred block, we were able to take utilize that money to.
to uh, to matching monies and but we had one million dollars that was clear for the city to use as they chose to use. So we directed it to the theater and we totally went through and gutted it. I mean gutted it where only the walls stood up, floors were taken out and we totally rebuilt it. And uh, then we had that grand opening where I don't know whether the Lord was mad at us for doing it, but it stormed heavily the day we opened it, you know. So we opened it under the under the uh, great moon. <laughs> what do you call it? Uh, Crescent. Well, it was a the, the the rain and everything else that was coming down on us that day. You know, <laughs> but the show went on. Yeah, we used all kinds of uh, the old cars. Someone provided the old cars, the old limousines, and the uh, antique cars and brought all of us up here to have the, the, the grand opening. And it was very, very successful as this place was packed. Um, then lo and behold, you know, uh, during, the, during the end of it, guess uh, when I was surprised because they, they actually named the, the auditorium in, uh, uh, for, for, for me, you know. And I just, I was just shocked, you know, I just, uh, I didn't, you know, you do things because it's the right thing to do. You don't do it because you're wanting recognition. And uh, I was really shocked when they did that. And it, uh, but it worked out. I mean, uh, of course, I, I would say that I'm very proud that that happened. Um, that encouraged me to stay on because I, I really care nothing about, I care nothing about uh, theater or anything else. This is, I was trying to just, provide something for someone else to be able to utilize. And if you recall, I was getting all kinds of instructions trying to learn how to operate, you know, the sound equipment and everything else, or how to control the lights in this place. And and that was quite a, quite a trick, trying to learn to do that because the sound boards and the lighting boards that, they, that we got were old equipment that they gave us. Even though the rest of the building was new, they gave us old equipment with which to operate. So we had to, and that were very complicated and how that had outlasted their use of where they had been before, which is the Kennedy Center, you know, which is, and that's where they took it out of. They took it out of the Kennedy Center and so we brought it in here, you know, and I, I was glad to have that because I was a very strong supporter and believer in John Kennedy, you know. So um, I was proud of that, but at the same time, it was very confusing equipment. <laughs> so we turned around and, and, and learned to utilize it, learned to use it. We put on some great productions, and it was a lot of fun, a lot of, a lot of hard work, and a lot of dedicated teachers, and a lot of students that were willing to learn. Kept them out of trouble, kept the parents involved, and, uh, and it's been going on that way. Uh, as the years have gone by, it's become better. We just, uh, I'm sure someone's already talked about this, but we recently received a national recognition by the president's wife. And we had to go to Washington to receive that. So it's really, really been uh, far beyond anything I ever expected to happen here. Now, do you remember coming here as a child? Oh, yes, yes, yes. As, as a child, I would uh, come over here with my mother because uh, this place here was the only place, like I say, you see movies. Uh, and they have stage uh, performances here. You have some of the best, best and most famous Mexican artists. You know they're not very they're not very proud like ours are that they have to have a big a big you know audience. They would come and play a little place like this. You know you have Cantinflas. Cantinflas one of the most renowned you know comics. You know he's the one that played in Around the World in 80 Days. You know um, which is Mario Moreno, but I mean but they call him Cantinflas. And then you have Sara Garcia, which is a 
a character player that was just about in every movie in Mexico. A uh, gray-headed lady that always played, uh, you know, the, the grandma. You know, and she would come here. And, you know, it just goes on. Uh, you know, just so many people that, that came here that, you know, we are very proud of, of them being able to be here. And so that gave this, this uh, an essence that, that needed to be filled again. Of course, we don't... We've gotten some famous people come back now since we got this thing done again. But of course, not, not, not of the tradition that used to come here, but more, more up-to-date people, you know. How do you, do you think it's gonna be, uh, seeing as when uh, some of the newer immigrants that come over here, and the, the younger kids, they're becoming more Americanized, do you think that this would probably be more of a, a culture refreshment of like how the diversity of the Hispanic culture is uh, kind of. You know, it 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 could be. It could be. Um, the thing that they're focusing on is is to provide an outlet for for young young students. We do a lot of we do a lot of uh, off-site training in schools plagues that we take to schools and uh, and we got a we got a touring company we built we built our own uh, started our own uh, uh, theater group you know where before we were just all a bunch of guys and gals that that uh, set up a board you know and we just operated loosely but we now we got professional uh, leadership and in as directors, and now everything is more focused and, and and to a point they have a they actually have a a goal in mind when when they, when they do things, and that's really working out very good. I'm, I'm very proud of our staff. I'm still I'm still active and uh, as a board member. I think they they made me a board member emeritus or whatever it is, you know, whatever that means. <laughs> But uh, we've uh, we've enjoyed that status now for a while. But uh, I was president of it for a long time, and then and then of course they finally got tired of, tired of my leadership, so they got rid of me. And, and that was okay, you know. That, that probably needed to happen. But tell me what happened uh, when the. I mean, when you, what was your first impressions of the theater and this area? And the, can you paint a picture of what the culture was, what, how it was, what was, what was it like? Well, it was, it was very hard to, uh, it was very hard to get this theater accepted. Um, our people were used to going to movies. You know, the older people were used to going to movies, not plays. You know, we were performing plays here. So I've tried to include, you know, a movie section of it in here, and I think somewhere down the line we're going to do that. I think I think that we've uh, we're almost in the process of starting that, where we'll actually start showing movies here. We certainly have the facilities, we have the screens, we have everything. Fortunately, when we built this, we built it to do everything that needed to be done, and. Uh, I don't think we were short-sighted in that. Uh, I remember the first screen that they put here, you know, I called in uh, the city people and said, what are you trying to do? I mean, that's got to go. So they brought me one twice the size. Now that's what we needed, you know, because that, now we can show, you know, uh, it just needed, didn't need to be that small. It just needed to be a large screen. And, and uh, the type of screen is, is anybody that understands photography or, re or showing back of, playing back of movies, you have a certain, have a certain quality of screen for it to really reflect, the, oh, yeah. to, to reflect what, what it's doing. Now as, a, now as a child though, I was wanting to get more of a, you know, like when you were growing up in this neighborhood, back in, I guess, what was it, the 50s? Yeah. What was it like? in this neighborhood area? Did, was there a lot of diversity, a lot of people? Oh, well, you know, don't, if you, I guess you're insisting on me talking about 
basically, if you were Hispanic, or in those days, they called it, if you were a Mexican, you were delegated to the east side of North Main. This street, this theater faces North Main facing west. So you're on the right side. See, uh, the other side of North Main was predominantly white. You know, in fact, yes, it was white. Um, now it just totally, that's gone. I mean, this, this is a community now, which is what it should have been all along. A community of laboring people, working people, working class people. And, and that's what I grew up in when I first, uh, when I was first born in my first 10 years, you know, I was, you know, I lived in a community that was black, white, and brown, you know. And they were all working people. We ate, we didn't know the difference of, of uh, what color you were. We were all working people. We all grew up together. And so I was kind of shocked when I first moved in to to Northside. I moved to the Northside in the, 50, in the late 40s. Um, so so that was a, quite a strange uh, thing. But then I went to school, of course, west of, of North Main. So uh, we had uh, that little conflict we had to deal with all the time. You know, but, you know, I guess I, I try not to even talk about those negative things anymore because they're gone. I'm not... They're gone only in the sense that that we we hope that that uh, those things never come back. Yeah. You know. I guess. I guess. Did the theater do anything to? That? Oh well, well, yeah, because now now we're being recognized by city leadership. Now, as the the arts people in this city now know who we are, we're we're getting awards all the time. Uh, for what we're doing here. We get good reviews from the papers now. Um, so now, where we used to struggle, struggle like crazy to, to get any kind of funding at all. Yeah. You know, we had to depend on the city for so long for all, just about all our funding. And now, uh, now we're, we're running uh, this year, I think we're going to pass three hundred thousand dollars of uh, budget, and that's not much for a lot of people. But for us, that we started out with twenty-five thousand dollars, you know, that's 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 a big jump, yeah. you know. And 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 uh, and we're doing great things. We're we're making that money stretch. We're making that money be used to its maximum, and that goes back to our leadership, our directors. No. But back in the 50s and 60s, did you see any live acts going on in the theater? Oh, yes, yes. What did you see? Well, like I say, I saw a lot of the... the oh. when, when I say live acts, you, come, you have some of the most popular singers coming in and singing. I mean, that was live acts. We didn't have no show, I mean, no uh, productions here. We would have uh, people come in and sing and, and dance and, and those kind of things, you know. Yeah. But that was, that, was, uh, that was about it. Did you ever take any uh, dates or anything? What was some of the memorable? I was too young, man. Oh, okay. I, was, I was just a baby. I got married. If, I got married in 1952, so. Oh, okay, okay. I was already married. <laughs> so yeah, I, I took my date, my wife. But uh, it was uh, it was quite a quite a quite a thing, you know, at that time because this was kind of unique. You know, it's kind of unique. It's, uh, we had a balcony then. At least I, I swear we had a balcony. They keep trying to tell me we didn't, but I, I swear we had a balcony. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, but I might, I might be mistaken if one of the balconies where my wife and I used to go up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, before we got married, of course. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I think this this theater has just uh, has just shown and proven that we can do it. We can do the things that are necessary to be done to to put on quality quality productions. And what what do you see the re the future being like for this area in the theater? Oh, it's uh, I think it's going to have to increase. I think that eventually, I think eventually we'll expand some more. 
we'll probably end up, you know, expanding either to the north or or um, or to the east behind us, and actually, you know, really build a build a real real first class, you know. But I'm thinking that's probably 15 years down the line from today. Uh, because we have gained so much. Like for instance, this place here is twice the size it was when we first started it. And that's only been, what, seven, eight years, something like that? In seven, eight years, we've doubled the size of this building. Now, what motivated you to say, okay, you know what, this theater and this whole block, this whole area needs to come in. What, how did that come about? Well, the second phase of it, of course, we had this. We got it rebuilt and got the city to build it for us. And then somehow I talked the city into buying the building next door and tear it down and build build a, a um, what we call a museum more, more time, more, an exhibit hall. Exhibit hall with offices and all the other things that, that uh, that go along with the theater, you know, and that's really worked out very good. That's really worked out very good. Now we have we have access to this building here through several ways. Now, before you, when you were on the stage, you either go in out the back, you know, or or had to come out through the front. Well, now we got the exits now. You know, it's it's really it's becoming a first class operation. You know, we, the the, the uh, now we we do we do productions and we build we build the sets to go with it. You know, and if you remember in the first parts of this, uh, you know, you saw what kind of things we had. We had to, we struggled with lights. Lights was the thing that made it made the whole production using lights instead of sets because we didn't have the sets, but now we do. Well, what what was the key element of making you? Making, I get. Did, was there a group of people that got together? Was it just you, or how did? Who did no, it? no. I always work. I always work with people. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an ideal man, and you know, I'm not a do. I'm not a on hands man. I'm. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I know what a hammer is, you know. But yeah. that's that's about it. But how did it, how did it get about? Like, well, we get people that are that 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 are, that are good at good at the, at the making things happen once you. Plant that idea in their mind. Anything you got to do, you got to nurture it, and then be able to provide money so they know it can be done. You know, and that was that was uh, where I came in. I had a lot of connections with this, with the uh, with both the community and the city at the time. They were still able to. We had people that believed in this, and and would find money for us. You know, and and that's still that's still going on. So we're really, you know, we're, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of our accomplishments, you know, because no one person does this, you know, no one person does this, and and even though I feel that I, I, I had a lot to do with it, but still, it took a lot of people to get it done. Wow. Now, at one point in time, there was a, a lull where the, the theater was shut down, and it was in kind of a. Uh, no one owned it, uh, and I think eventually the, the uh, restaurant. Yeah, the, yes. Yeah, Alfred and his dad bought it, and then they said there was a lot of bars in the area. Do you remember? Totally that? around, for sure. I mean, I used to go to all the bars. One <laughs> 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 well, the building next door that we bought, that used to be one of the most famous bars on the north side, pool halls. Really? Yeah, dance hall. Yeah, it was a hotel. I mean, we, we, we took care of everybody. You know, we uh, you had a pool hall on the basement floor. You had a dance hall and bar on the on the second floor, and then you had a hotel upstairs. Yeah, and then uh, at one time it was a grocery store. Really? Yes. And when it burned, then then the grocery store moved across the street. Okay. If you, for the sake of, of for people to identify with it, it used to be Loveless. Loveless grocery store. It used to be on the corner of, of, uh, of uh, 15th there and or 14th in North Main. You know, and they made it a strip shopping center across the street. It was a grocery store. Yeah. You know. 
And I, know I was getting from Alfred, you said that most of the violence wasn't gang, it was more like no. somebody ruined somebody's name or some, some passionate thing. What, what no. was your take on that? No, I mean, there wasn't a gang issue then. That was not, that gang issue came much later. Gang issues here, I mean, what would happen is someone's in there drinking and somebody wants to take somebody else's girl and so we went out and decided it. You know, you either get cut up or shot, one or the other. You never did any of that? No, 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 no. Uh, take anybody else's No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I was too young, number one, to be in here. Okay. And, and, um, but I did. I, I liked to, to come in and see what was going on. I love to dance. I've always loved to dance. So, uh, I got saw a lot of fights, you know, and uh, I always worried about getting cut or shot, you know, but but I was there. What, you know. what made you want to be a council member or what, was there an, like an event in your life where you're just like, you know, somebody needs to do something, I want to make a difference? I'm sorry? Yeah, why did you take your career path? Why did you, I mean, like, did you say at one time when you were younger that, you know, I want to make a difference, I want to run for city council or what was it? Actually I didn't. Oh really? I was uh, I was out of the country in fact when I got called and they made this single member district and I was called and said you know you're, you're articulate you're you know you speak both languages fluently uh, you would be the ideal person to to run for city council so um, I kept saying no, no, no. I was getting paid more money I ever made in my life when I was down in Mexico. I was working there. And um, then I was reminded that I had promised to do that if they ever went to St. Louis District. So you gave us your word. Well, that, that locked me in because I am a man of belief in, in responding to, to if I give you my word, I'll, I'll follow through with it. So I gave notice to the company and, and came back. And fortunately, there was eight of us ran the first time. And I was able to, to win out of those eight. You know, and it was uh, quite a victory. That was, I don't even talk about it now because I'll start trying. I'll get tears in my eyes because that was a, that was a, that was a, a something to see. I mean, the first uh, non-white, to be elected on city council in four. And while in office, what did you do? Oh, <laughs> you know, you, uh, if you were to drive through this neighborhood, you'll see, you know, parks, streets, everything, uh, libraries. Uh, you see, um, you see uh, centers, community centers, you know, and they all got my name on them. You can see them, you can go. They, the ones we were involved with, we got very, very involved. We, I was very, um, I had a very good way of, of manipulating, and that's a bad word, but I'm, that's what it was. I manipulated the, the money to, to come to Northside, simply based on the fact that Northside had long been forgotten and it needed it the worst of anybody else. Do you think they zoned it? Industrial? Sports? I know they did. So that they could kind of push everybody? I know they did. I'm just, I mean, that was a fact when I said that. That was, that was a fact. That happened around 1941, 42. Yeah. Put all the, all the crud in our side. How did you sweep that? How did you pull that? that how did well, you... I simply had, I had our staff go through and do a complete analysis of all the zoning cases, of all the zoning here in the near north side. Tell me what the proper zoning should be. Let's look at what's there now. And then give the people an opportunity without cost to them to rezone it back to what it should be. Because people that owned a house would try to get a loan and could not get a loan because it was zoned industrial. All right? And the reason for that is because you got zero lot line, which means that someone could build a building right next to your lot. I mean, right on your line. See, well, when you got when you when it's a house, then you got you got at least a five foot on each side, you know, separation. So it's you know it's a made quite a difference, and uh, and we did that, we did that. 
and didn't get it all complete. I think it's being completed now. But I, I started it all that, you know. And, and the staff was very reluctant to do that for me, but but it got done. Um, we uh, were able to uh, get staff to spend money out here. I know that the mayor at the time was Bob Boland, and he he said to me one day, I had my accountant go over all of the expenditures we've made since I've been on as mayor, and you have gotten 75% of all the money from this council spent in Northside. I said, God, I missed that other 25%. <laughs> <laughs> he, you know, he said, you mean that, don't you? I said, yes, sir. If I could get it all, I'll get it out of Northside. Yeah simply because it's been, been the most neglected of any other person. And for that reason, most of the guys went along with it because they knew the North Side had been neglected. And, the, and thus, they, they didn't really fight me about it. You know, and, and having been a, a union negotiator for the union at, at the Bell Helicopter, the UAW, I was able to in small groups, convince people that these are the things we need to do, yeah. and, and we're able to do that. That's, that's. I mean, that was the only. That's the only things that I can say, say positive about my ability, my negotiating ability. But I'm saying that it, it took a lot of people to do it. I'm just one individual. It still takes. It still takes five votes. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, so you have to be able to convince at least five people, four people to go with you. That's what I tell all new council members going and count to five. Really? Count to five. If you can count to five, you can get anything you want done. You know. Whenever you talked about how you said you'd give your word if you ran, how did you get in that to that conversation where you said I'd give your word, you would give your word to run? Well, I had a lady that used to hound me to death about running, and I said I have nothing. I have no desire to ever run. Every Hispanic that ran got the, got the can beat bad. I said, nah. and, and me, I was just interested in, in, in doing what I was doing, you know, just I didn't care nothing about getting into politics or anything else. And so she hounded me enough that finally I said, okay, just to get her off my back, you know. <laughs> and she reminded me, you, you promised. You gave us your word. So you were just, you're just going to be the councilman whether you liked it or not? Well, I don't know if you had to win first. That's true. But they supplied, they supplied the, uh, the uh, what is it, the legwork. They were, they were the, 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 the pounders out on the street, you know, and um, I ran the campaign out of the Texas Hotel up there on a the suite there on the sixth floor. Oh, wow. Huh. Now, Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, well, I came back from Mexico. Of course, uh, the company pays you for 30 days, all expenses when you come back. And uh, my campaign chairperson was a lady, the manager of the Texas Hotel's wife. So she set me up in a suite up there. You know, so and paying regular prices. I wasn't paying because Bell was paying for the Bell was paying for the room. Yeah. You know, and uh, of course I had I had a bedroom and I had two great meeting. I had two bedrooms and a great meeting room there, right there by the pool. So it was it was real low 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 cost to <laughs> campaign place. But that started, and of course we had to move to a house because it, it ran longer than that. That's back when you used to get elected in March. Okay, and when you left, were you satisfied? Oh no, I, I don't like getting beat. I finally got beat because I was because of uh, my involvement with the airport. As you know, I became chairman of the board of Dallas Wars International. People felt that that was taking too much away from the city because I I went all over the world trying to get airlines to fly into the DFW. You know, and it was successful. Yeah. Wow. Wow, it's amazing. Well, awesome. You've been busy. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's see, I can't think of anything more about the theater. We did the past and present, and uh, we did the lull, and um, did some of the historic already, and how you renovated it. Is there any other 
uh, crazy stories that you could give us that that happened when you were visiting the theater and its and I guess in its in its heyday, I guess they would say. Well, you know, of course. They used to sell the popcorn. I love to come over and get that little popcorn. You know, they used to sell it out of that window there. They used to be, um, they'd set, they had that little popcorn machine there and candies and everything else. And you go up there, just like every other theater, you know. And it was just great, to, great to get that. Now, was there ever an act that came through that everybody hated and they threw vegetables at them? No, oh, not that I know of. Not <laughs> a, no, not that I know of. But it did now. When, uh, was there any event that happened here that was kind of unique when you that you experienced, like a singer going to the stage or a singer coming out of the audience? Or I mean, what they all did. That's some, that's one thing about Mexican actors and players and everything. Yeah, they come out in the audience. They don't they don't get to keep themselves away from from the people. The people's what made them. They recognize that, so they make it a point to go out into the crowd, and touch hands, and. All those things, you know. Where would they stay when they when they would come here to? to, to well, that see, that was that's that stuff that I was I was too young to, to really understand that, you know. Mm -hmm. Those things were being taken care of by somebody else, so I don't know what that part of the of the, of the entertainment I knew nothing about, you know. Was it weird to see your parents acting, reacting to you know, and coming? Well, just my mom, because my dad died when I was seven years old, so okay. he died in 1941. Mom never remarried. No, well, she did for about a year, and then that, you know, I helped her get rid of that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, what, what, uh, your mom would take you here and come with friends or family? Yeah, they could get a little group of old ladies, you know, to come come to see. You. And and uh, when you were growing up, who'd you grow up with that's still to here today? Well, we meet uh, on the first, the second Tuesday of the month. First Tuesday of the month. First Tuesday of the month, we meet at a restaurant and we all get together. And that's about, the uh, last count was about 60. Oh, really? Wow. People that grew up in this neighborhood that we all went to school together, or not necessarily the same school, but we went to different schools and we all run around about the same. We were all, we all knew each other because we all, you know, were about the same age. What was their names, do you know? Oh, yeah, a lot of names. I mean, you got the Rodriguez family, which, which uh, owned the Rodriguez Festive Foods. They're part of it. There's about four brothers that, that go to this meeting. They still own that plant down there? Or they sold uh, no, they sold it uh, okay. at a uh, good price and good retaining fee to stay on as consultants. Uh -huh. And then uh, one of the one of the Rodriguez boys couldn't stand it anymore. He bought the the uh, he bought the tamale plant back because that was his mother's, you know. So he bought that back into the family. Now they're they're operating that. Was that Ral Rodriguez or no? That's no, uh, Ernest. Ernest, okay. Ernest and and Ernest has uh, got his sons that are operating it. Okay. You know, they, they, that's it. And now you got the third, and th you know, second and third generation of guys that are that are the ones that are active now. See, we're all the fuddy duddies. Oh yeah. <laughs> and Joe T's. Well, Joe T was uh, was uh, Tafoya. So actually, his name was Tafoya. Okay. Tafoya Garcia. You know, and uh, but uh, his his he's passed away, and his wife's passed away. So he's got his daughters and, and grandsons all operating in the place. Hope still operates from day to day basis. She's there every day. One of the daughters. And there's still I have about two or three other daughters that are still around. They come in on, uh, one of them works over at the, at the uh, Joe T's on, and acts as a hostess. Okay. You know, but she, she's there in the kitchen. You can see her, you can see, uh, Hopes are in the kitchen, making sure that food is being prepared right, you know. Over here at the other one, you know, at the bakery. Yeah. You know. And who else, who else in the area? Well, you had um, all the Trujillos. Um, you had, uh, oh gosh, uh, Martinez, you had, uh, Flores, uh, oh, you, you just, well, everybody lived in this neighborhood. Uh, 
uh, some one or two of, of each one of these families comes to these meetings. Because they all kind of they all bought food from each other. They all how it, was that how it worked? I mean, like, no, no. Most of them were were packing house workers. Okay. And then some became engineers, and some of them, you know, worked for Lockheed. Others went on down to Houston. Uh, you, know, you had some went out to General Motors. You know, you had uh, whenever what they they all. But it wasn't so such of a small town that when the kids were the kids that you were growing up with were like, ah, we got to get out of here. I can't wait to get out of this town. This is a horrible town. Or was there any? No, no, because uh, you got to remember in the, in the, in the, in, the, in the Mexican families. Family means quite a bit. You you have a lot of family ties. It's hard to break those family ties. The younger kids nowadays, they don't. Do hey, Dad, goodbye. Yeah. You know. But no, though back in those days, you you were a little loyal to your family. Very loyal to your family. And, and uh, if uh, if a parent had a business going, the, the children were expected to take it over. That doesn't happen to second generation, though. You know, they'll ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh. But do you think this theater would help shape up not only seeing the culture, but also motivating these kids to, you know, look at how they're... Well, what you've got now, though, is you've got, you've got a new set of players. You've got a new set of players with a different set of values. Um, you got people that are going to, have to learn how to speak English first. Uh, second, you got people that are going to have to understand understand the values of the United States versus the values of some other country. Yeah. And there's quite a bit of difference there. In that way, yes, yes, we'll be able to help uh, because in these plays they learn that you know these are our values here. You know. Because otherwise, otherwise, uh, it wouldn't work. I just really believe that we have a, at least a twofold job to do here. And and win their trust first. Then you get the parents involved. That's very important. If you get the parents involved, and then, then it be, it, it'll work. It'll be successful. But you got to get the parents involved. And I guess this doesn't have a really touch on the theater or anything, but. What do you think about the, the illegal immigrants and that whole thing that's going on right now with these borders and walls? Do you think that it's Well, I hate the word illegal because uh, uh, well, even though you said it right, illegal immigrant, and before they say aliens, you know, and, and to me aliens are somebody out from outer space, you know. <laughs> that's right, yeah. You know, and they used to bother the heck out of me, but, but unfortunately, uh, and, and it can't be done, but if it could be done, if you could just take every one of them out of here, just say a week, just shut everything down. I mean, literally shut everything down. If for one week they wouldn't show up for it, your restaurants were shut down. I'm talking about all restaurants. Not Mexican restaurants, all restaurants. The, the cooks are all Mexican, just about. Um, highway projects. Every highway project's been done by Mexicans. Building, every damn building's been done, built by Mexicans. You know, I don't know what we're fussing about. I just. I guess what I meant was like, do you think that they should become, the illegal immigrants should become legal? You know, be well, but then that, that's, that creates a threat for the, for the, for the local people. You know, um, that creates a threat to them because all of a sudden they got the voting power. Mm. See? And uh, whether they like it or not, it's happening anyway. Yeah. So, so they ought to try to adjust to that. Um, the school system right now, the, the highest number of people that are going to schools today is Mexican people. I'm not talking about you know, people want to call them Hispanics, but they're both all from Mexico. And and um, and uh, and people hate that. People hate that, man. In fact, if you read the story yesterday, the day before, uh, the Ku Klux Klan, or heard it, and the family of the Ku Klux Klan is having a tremendous growth. 
and the Nazi neo-Nazi groups are having a tremendous growth because they're coming back trying to fight, get rid of the Mexicans. So we're going to we're fixing to see some pretty nasty things happen in this country again. That's crazy. You know, and I hate to see that, and but I believe it. Yeah. I've been seeing it coming. Really? Yeah. And they finally, they need me to finally acknowledge it, that it's happening. They're having such a growth that it's just, just scary. Mm. I think that um, they said this here in Fort Worth, there's about five new KKK units. In Fort Worth? In Fort Worth alone. Oh, wow. So I'm just telling you, man, it's, it's, instead of worrying about gangs, they're probably going to have to worry about, about some of these other things. Mm-hmm. And probably have clashes between the gangs and them. Yeah. Might have to band together, the gangs will. Maybe. Well, the bad part about it is they're already gang. I mean, you got the 28th Street Gang, there's at least 400 members. Huh. They all carry guns. Really? <laughs> you know, another thing I was thinking about, I mean, there's a gentleman that's wanting me to do a uh, a documentary on the Fort Worth, the, the Seventh Street Gang. You know anything about them? Mm, yeah. <laughs> well, you like that. You get to be good, nice places if they'll talk to you. Really? Yeah. That's all you, all your money people. Really? Seventh Street Gang is all the. Uh, see, the Seventh Street Gang originally was Fuquay. He was the leader of it. This is back in the old days. See, now I don't know who it is since Friedman died. I don't know who runs it now, you know. But I'm talking, these are the upper echelon, ultra millionaires, billionaires. Huh. That's, that's, that's a game. They control the city. Is it still going on today? Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Any, anybody don't, don't realize that, that nothing gets down in this sound unless they, they agree to it. Wow. I don't care how strong I am or any one of us are. They can find ways of doing it. Is the bond still... Uh, so good that they, I mean, like they meet up at the Fort Worth, Fort Worth Club. Oh yeah, that's, that's wow. They certainly don't meet out here. Yeah. You know, no, no, there's there's some good guys in that. Don't get me wrong, but Fort- but 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 basically they're there to protect the uh, protect the uh, the quality of life of the SAC at City of Fort Worth. And they control it. Wow. Why do they call the Seventh Street? Well, because at the time, Seventh Street's where all the big boys were. Oh. See? Wow. That's where all the big business people were, all the oil people were at. And that's what Fort Worth used to be, oil. Oh, yeah. All oil. And did you ever have a run-in while you were in city council with anything like, uh, no, we're not going to do that, or no, we're not going to put our money there, or whatever? <laughs> I hate to bring those things back up. But, oh, you know me, as bashful as I was. Yes, I had quite a few, you know, and, and usually one mine because I was able to, I was able to convince them of reasoning, even though I agree with your position from your perspective, but you got to look at it from my perspective. I represent the day-to-day person out here, you know, and they are having a hard time. They don't have the luxuries that you have. So we need to consider how we're going to be able to find some way of accommodating these people so they too can have a chance. And you got one. They're pretty good about that. If you can make a good argument, they would work with you. Wow. Yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't uh, that didn't make them like me anymore, but, but uh, at least I, would, I, I talk with reason. Yeah. And, and that's all they want. They don't want to be yelled at. They just want some logic. Of re- yeah, some logic, exactly. exactly. Okay, awesome. Well, I think I got all the questions I need. This is great. I don't yeah. know if Kent, she's probably got somebody else. You got some other people lined up? Uh, no. Oh, okay. I didn't know how much time we had. It was a wrap for today, and then we started again on Thursday. We just got a fountain of information here. <laughs> okay. I don't know how much. Ooh, this slide is blinding. I don't, I don't know how much more talking you want to do, but I got. Okay. Are you done? Uh, you... Oh yeah, no, yeah. I can't. Some of the other things I'd rather not really. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, because you know, got this thing still on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>